I've been out of prison. I did two and a half years, basically, uh, on a B felony dealing charge. I was an opiate addict from, like I was a full-blown addict before I graduated high school. So, you know, I spent the better part of 15 years or so hardcore addicted to opiates. Addiction is more like a cancer. It's a diabetes. It's, it's something that's lifelong. Even if you get it in remission, you're always going to have to be on the lookout. So when they asked me if I, if I wanted treatment, I knew the value of a safety net. I started the Project Care program, and it's been, it has been a blessing every single day that I've participated with it. Most guys come out of prison with the idea that I'm not going to go back to doing what I was doing. I, you know, I, I don't like it here. I don't want to come back. Um, and then the first thing they do is try and find a job and they, they can't get one, you know. And it's, it's such a, a crushing moral blow right off the bat. I had gotten a job. I had an uncle who owns a, a pool company and he gave me a job. But not long after I started, maybe two months after I started, I, that's when I injured my arm. I tore my bicep loose. and. Uh, so I just moved into a new apartment and I was suddenly faced with a debilitating injury. That's when Project Care came and, and actually paid my rent while I was recuperating. With the unemployment rates, what they are already, when you've got that big black X to start out with, with the felony, it basically stacks the deck against you, you know? It took me 30 places. I had to hustle and hustle and hustle and finally found somebody that was willing to give me a chance and a job that would allow me to work with my entire left arm in a sling and a brace. I'm in the therapeutic community at Branchville Correctional Facility. Um, what led me to come here was uh, forgery and theft, um, forged checks to feed my addiction pretty much, and um, part of my sentence, I was sentenced to 10 years, is to come here and complete this program and hopefully modify out early and get back on track. I thought I had it all under control, didn't think I needed no help or nothing, and I get out and it's totally different. Once you get out, it's a whole new world. You're back around your old friends, old places, Everything is available like here and treatment places, nothing's really available. So of course you got it under control. When you get out there and it's right in your face and you gotta have money, money's a big thing. You gotta have money for everything. And not having a job to come up with the money, I mean, it gets discouraging and leads to back to what you've always done. I started coming in because I was addicted to cocaine. Not only was I um, addicted, they said that I could possibly be bipolar, that I had other issues that I hadn't dealt with that caused me to continue to go back out and use. So when I got out, and I am a felon, and I was like, okay, wherever I go, I put down I'm a felon, and I never get a job. It felt like everything was just useless. It didn't make sense for me to keep struggling. It didn't make sense for me to keep staying clean because no one is gonna give me a chance. One of my main things is being afraid to ask for help. That's where I've ran into problems before. I don't like to, I like to feel like I'm under control and I got this and really I don't, I'm a mess inside. And being here, I'm starting to speak up in meetings and speak about it. And you see that there are people that are willing to help. We are so excited about this Department of Labor grant that we just received. It isn't just about trying to find people jobs, which is a huge barrier for our clients, but it really is about finding a career. Uh, it's kind of exciting. I mean, a bunch of us from Bloomington all gathered around and read it, and um, it's kind of exciting to know that there's somebody out there, as soon as you get out, that can 
point you in the right direction. There are a lot of opinions about us assisting people who have committed crimes. There is a certain attitude that why are they getting help? I mean, this is a terrible economy. A lot of people in this economy don't have jobs and can't afford housing. And so there is a little bit of uh, bitterness, if you will, that some members of the community might express, uh, to which I would say, as an elected official whose concern is public safety, uh, among many other things, is that actually this is a public safety measure to make sure that individuals who have struggled with addictions, who have committed crimes, who have spent time uh, incarcerated, get a fair shot when they come out to move their lives in a different direction. It requires us to be more proactive in educating people that this is a proactive safety measure to ensure the crime rates are reduced and jail time is reduced and uh, poverty rates are, are reduced. And we explain to our participants in drug court especially that there's a lot of amends they have to make for what the choices they made in the past. But obviously, a grant that is targeted to um, educating employers and encouraging employers to hire people with certain kinds of criminal convictions and certain types of mental illness or addictions is a great help because if you can cause people to believe they have a reason to get up and go to work and they receive that paycheck and they feel that sense of responsibility, that's a huge positive for people. I, I would call it a second chance to go out and prove yourself to society. We made those mistakes, but now we're changing. I think it needs to be understood that none of these programs are, here you go to the individual, the participant, we're giving this to you and you don't have to do anything. What is what it's offering is, is opportunities to go do something. If you want to take advantage of it, great. Here are the opportunities. But it's not handing somebody something, taking that job away from somebody else. Many of the individuals that I've certainly come in contact with through my work in the local jail, individuals in the addicts and recovery program, is that many of them have skills. They're skilled carpenters, they're skilled roofers, they're electricians, they're plumbers. It's not that they don't have work skills, but their addictions along the way have tripped them up and they've lost jobs and they've lost families and they've you know, obviously committed crimes. But it's not that they need complete job training when they come out. They might need redirected in another area where there are more likely to be jobs that, that can employ them. Well, I'm a concrete finisher and I lay brick and block and stuff, but I want to get into a uh, fitness trainer. I want to go back to school. When I was just out there, I was working out and it kept me motivating, kept me going, like keeps my attention and it keeps me focused. So I'd like to go back to school to be some sort of fitness trainer or get into that field somehow. The number one thing that my guys ask me, should I lie on my application? You know, and you just can't do it because it's going to come back and, and, and bite you in the end. But if you have a, a middle man like Centerstone, that can work with employers to where there's no secrets and there's no, you know, you're not worried all the time that you go to work after you, you've gotten married and had a kid and bought a house and then two years down the road later, the employer finds out you lied and then you lose everything again. I come from a background of gang banging. I grew up around it. My family was a part of it, so it's kind of handed down to me. I've never had a problem with it, but when you sell it, it's just like you're doing it because you're addicted to the fast money, the lifestyle that it brings. And I was totally addicted, and it's just hard trying to out here trying to do the right thing. A few days ago, a good friend of mine, I was super frustrated because I was broke. And actually, a couple good friends of mine told me, this is what it's like to really struggle. So I'm trying to embrace that now. When I gave up that lifestyle, I gave up way more than just the money of it. I gave up my family, the only family I ever had. So what I'm trying to do now is find a support system. And Centerstone is helping me do that also, you know, set up a positive support system, a system that's going to help me live on a straight and narrow instead of the zigzag. That's one of my favorite parts about Project Care is the way it sort of brings together the ex-inmates who who have similar goals. I never had any old friends. I have a lot of old drug buddies, you know. There's not any of them that are the kind of guy I would want to call if my car broke down on the side of the road. But there are guys in the Project Care that I've met that if I needed one of them, they would be there, you know. When my arm was, was hurt, Callaway, he owns 
he owns a house and uh, he needed a little bit of plumbing work done. I've got experience with that. So he he hired me to do a little plumbing work for him, one armed, you know what I mean? Like he ended up doing half the work himself, but he still paid me, he was very generous. And he did that just to help a brother out. You know, I, I hope that someday I will have a chance to pay that back to him. Yeah, James and I, we uh, met at Branch, Branchville. Yeah, we were on the <laughs> work crew. crew. Yeah. Yep. Uh, cutting wood, you know, and stacking wood. Was it 74 cents a day? No, uh, no, it was 98 cents. Was it 98? 98 cents a day, yeah. <laughs> big, big things. Yeah, we cutting grass with uh, weed eaters, you know, we did all that stuff, you know. Uh, from 6 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the evening. Old friends, I learned to stay away from them. I just <laughs> don't deal with them, period. I mean, I learned since I've been out of prison, I've been out 18 months now, that um, old friends just seems like they just want to take away from your life. Like the friends I got now, they, how should I put it? They're feeding me more than what my old friends, like they take from me, you know what I mean? So I don't really deal with them anymore. I mean, I pretty much stick to myself or either I talk to one of these guys or one of the guys from, or either my counselor from Centerstone or any problem I have, I can talk to them about it. These are men who have never really been emotionally connected to other people for the most part. Most of them don't have a good family history. Um, they come from the streets or they, they have a long drug history and then they've been in prison where definitely they are discouraged from connecting emotionally with each other. Most of the guys start out, like I said, not wanting really to participate. But once they come in and there are other group members who've been there for a little while who just draw them in. It's almost, um, they almost don't have a choice about it once they start attending the group. The guys who have some history there, just bring them in and make them feel wanted and let them know that it's safe to be there. I can honestly say they're a big part of my motivation because we all got the same similar backgrounds no matter what they are and just the motivation that they bring to the table is enough for me because I'm like, if they're able to overcome that mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, then why can't I? So I find a whole lot of inspiration in their motivation and that helps me to move forward. I've been a drunk for 40 years and it's the first time, I mean, I went through the program two years ago. I've been through counseling, AA, everything else, but it's, this is the only project that I, have completed. I mean, I don't mean no disrespect to nobody else, but this is one group that is for a parolee. If he gives it a chance, he has to want it, but it does work. You know, I, I work at a local fast food store, but I, I have money in the bank. I feel like a person. I don't feel like a convict or a felon. I feel like somebody who can who can stand in a conversation with anyone. You know, I, I earned my own way. And, you know, if it weren't for the job, then I wouldn't be able to do that. My grandpa always says, you know, the, the satisfaction of a job well done is the, you know, that's the best thing you can have at the end of the day, you know, and it is. It's, it's such an amazing feeling just to know that I did what I was supposed to do today. You know, I, I put forth effort and, and it's gonna pay rewards. But if you have an organization like Centerstone or some reentry program that's also part of the bargain, look, not only is this individual working for you, this individual is also still accountable to us. We're still working with this individual, providing them with support, providing them with uh, other things that they need. And in a way, don't we all need somebody to vouch for us? Don't we all need mentors? Don't we all need someone to give us good letters of recommendation? So in a sense, this is an opportunity for ex-offenders to come out, work with the program, distinguish themselves in that program as good bets, good workers, people that you will be happy to have on your employment team, and then continue through the good works of this program to be a model to where it won't be such a hard sell you know, for employers in the community. They'll just know, wow, if you really want some great employees that are motivated to do good work, this is the place to go.